Galatians 3.16 illustrates the importance of being able to understand third declension formations. That verse says, To Abraham were the promises made, and to his seed. He does not say, and to seeds, you can see that that noun is plural, seeds, as to many, but rather as to one, and to your seed, who is Christ. And so Paul is basing his argument on a messianic prophecy made to Abraham based on how that noun appears. And maybe this is, this is probably a reference to the Septuagint, which was the Greek version of the Hebrew Old Testament. Uh, so in this, in this chapter, we're learning about third declension words. The Greek word for the singular form, seed, is spermati. And you can see that's a little different from the plural form, which would be seeds or spermasin. Spermati versus spermasin. And in this lesson, we're going to talk about the formation of these third declension nouns, which we can see by Galatians 3.16, sometimes are, sometimes are really important um, to understand a theological argument. So, let's review what the declensions are. Uh, I've mentioned before that the word declension is just kind of a fancy term which describes the word formation. So, first declension nouns are, refer to feminine words like grafe and hora. And I've underlined the stem vowel because the first declension refers to those feminine words that, whose stem ends in an eta or an alpha. So when we see a noun whose stem vowel is eta or alpha, we know that it is feminine and it's first declension. Second declension nouns refer to those masculine and neuter words like logos and ergon. And both the masculine and neuter words have their stem vowel as omicron, and that's second declension. Third declension is what we're concerned to learn in this lesson, and these are words whose stem ends in a consonant. So to this point, we've learned first and second declension nouns, and that's the majority of nouns in the New Testament. But there is a big, big handful of third declension nouns. The difference is, first and second, their stem ends in a vowel. It could be eta, alpha, or omicron. The third declension, their stem ends in a consonant. So if we take a word like uh, spermasin or uh, sperma, the stem is spermat. And we're going to talk about the formation, uh, of why it looks the way it does in the verse that we just studied. But the stem is spermat. It ends in a tau and not a vowel. So this is a third declension word. Endings are partially determined by the type of letter that precedes them. <clears throat> in just a minute, we're going to look at what, uh, the, the third declension endings, which are some of them are same, some of them are different from the endings we've already learned. And they're different in places because it's partially determined by the letter that precedes them. So if it's a consonant which precedes the ending, that's going to affect what the ending is. And so there will be a change sometimes. And consonants also interact with the endings a little differently than the vowels do, which also affects what the, the ending is ultimately going to look like. Changes within the third declension help with pronunciation, and other times they clarify the meaning of the noun. So let's take a look at these endings. We need to have this uh, first chart, the first and second declension endings, memorized. If we don't ha yet have these memorized, we're going to find that uh, the parsing and the translation is, is going to be slow going. But if we can get these memorized, that is the first step in clipping right along in our parsing and translation. Um, well, now we are going to work on memorizing these third declension endings. And this week we should, we should get these memorized as much as possible, um, which means we want to have all of the noun endings memorized by the end of the week. Um, and if you just quickly compare the third declension endings with the ones on the left, you can see there's a little overlap, but there's also some, some brand new endings. There's overlap in the sense that we'll take a look at the genitive plural. They're all uh, omega and nu, right? They're all own. Dative plural, they're very similar. Instead of yoda sigma, over in the third declension, it's sigma yoda, with sometimes a removable nu. Sometimes that nu will appear or not, depending on how the next word begins. And that's just to kind of enunciate the words, whether it's there or not. Uh, if you look at the accusative plural, there's some overlap there, at least with the neuter, they're, they're both uh, alpha. And up at the top on the left, for instance, the masculine and feminine, they'll, their word will end in uh, sigma. And over in the masculine singular, 
for first and second declensions, it's also singular. So we're just saying there's a lot of overlap. Dative singular is the same. Uh, all of them end in yoda. So there's some overlap, but there's also some significant changes. One thing that's a little different about this chart, you can notice it's a little more narrow. That's because the masculine and feminine nouns are going to take the same endings. And in one sense, um, that's kind of helpful because that means there's less endings to memorize. But in another sense, it means, oh, well, how it might be a little hard to distinguish the gender. And there's lots of contextual helps that will help us to distinguish a gender. Um, we're going to say in a second it's how we memorize the word is the main way. But also a lot of times these nouns have the article. And so it, remember the article always agrees in case number and gender. So if we look at the article and we remember the, the uh, we look at the vowel, we look at the ending, we can parse the article and then we'll be able to parse the noun that it's modifying. So that'll be a way we can distinguish between the masculine and feminine. But they do share endings. Now I just mentioned that uh, when we uh, the when we memorize these third declension words, um, the way we memorize it will help us remember the gender, and that's because these words will appear with their article um, in in the vocabulary listing. So if we take a word like sperma, which is the word for seed, we're going to see in the vocabulary section that the the article follows it. And the article is ta, in this case. Ta is the neuter article. And so that tells us, oh, well, sperma is a neuter word then. And uh, the, the two words that we uh, saw in the opening was spermati and spermasin. Um, and that would be a dative singular versus a dative plural. But let's talk a little bit more about, uh, about the, uh, the way we memorize these third declension nouns. So the article will appear with the form of the third declension word as we memorize it to show us the gender. But it's also going to appear with the genitive form of that word. And sarx is a common word which illustrates how this works. If you look over to the right, we have sarx, which is the nominative singular form or the lexical form of the word. And then we have the genitive form listed, sarkos. And uh, that might look a little funny, but that's because the genitive singular has a, a different ending. It's omicron sigma instead of upsilon, which we're used to seeing, at least for the, the masculine and neuter forms. It's sarkos, and then comes the article, which tells us, okay, this is a feminine word. These are the three elements. The genitive appears because it shows us the stem of the word. So these will appear with their genitive form and the article. Take a look at all, all of the forms here of sarx. I've underlined the forms that are going to have the stem. Now technically, the nominative singular there is sarx, which is not underlined, and a little bit lower down in the dative plural, the sarxine, um, technically they have the stem, but the stem doesn't appear. And that's because there's usually a contraction, or there might be, uh, sometimes in the nominative singular, there's just changes that happen. It's a little harder to recognize, and the stem doesn't appear. Well, the genitive, by memorizing the genitive singular for all of these third declension words that we're going to learn, it shows us how how uh, what the stem looks like. And you can see by looking at the, all these forms of sarx that most of the time the stem will appear. So we've got sarx, then we've got sarka, sarki, sarka. Sark, that ends with a kappa, which is the stem, appears in most of those forms, and the same is true for the plural forms. The nominative case is often characterized by contractions and other changes, so we need to memorize the genitive, which shows us the stem. And so we'll memorize a word like sarx, sarx, sarkos, he. Or if we were going to memorize uh, sperma, the word that means seed, it would be uh, sperma, spermatos, ta. Now, what, any discussion of third declension nouns has to involve a discussion of the square of stops. Uh, and this will help us make sense a little bit more of the nominative form of sarx, for instance. We know that the stem is sark. If we just look at the genitive form that appears with it, sarx, sarkos, he. Sarkos, okay, that shows us the stem. Um, well, what happened in the nominative singular? Well, what happened was there was a fusion of the two letters, which is called the square of stops. When kappa meets sigma, it becomes a xi. And that's pretty logical because xi sounds like a kappa plus a sigma. X. Kappa sigma makes x, 
and a xi is that x sound. So this happens in the nominative singular and in the dative plural. Let's go back for just a second. In the dative plural down below, you can see that it's sarxin. Well, there again, we're seeing the square of stops. It's when kappa meets sigma, it becomes a xi. Uh, so there's actually three categories of these um, the square of stops. Uh, if a stem of a word uh, ends with a pi or a p or a beta or a phi, and the next letter is a sigma, which again that will happen in the nominative singular and dative plural, then those that those letters fuse to become a psi. Again, it's a logical change because the two letters sound like that. So take a word like lilops, which means storm. It'd be lilops, lilopos, he. That's how we'd memorize it. Well, the the p there of the stem. Remember that genitive form, that middle form. It shows we memorize it because it shows us the stem of the word. When it meets sigma, it becomes a psi. Or there's also the velar category. These are letters that you have to, you have to use your throat to pronounce. K, g, and h. When these meet sigma they will form a xi. So we have sarx or sarkos, he. And then the third category are the dental letters. The tau, the delta, and the theta. Whenever these meet sigma, they become just a sigma. So they simplify. So a, a word that illustrates this would be the word for light. Phos, photos, ta. We're going to talk more about these third declension this week, uh, and we're going to uh, practice a lot with them. Hope you can make the synchronous session later this week. Uh, but we'll find that as we work with these, they'll become more simple. Let's just focus on uh, having the first and second declension noun endings memorized, and this week we also want to memorize these new third declension endings.